this week on Engage the Sage. Hi, I'm Don Saucier. Welcome to Engage the Sage. In this week's video, we're going to show you a story that I told recently in class. What I did in this story is I was setting up a fairly simple concept, the concept of you should help people when they need help. And the bystander effect that suggests that sometimes when lots of people are around, they may not help. So what we wanted to do is to show that a simple concept might not really be all that simple. What you're also going to see is what I've tried to do in this class is to set the norm for discussion. So as I talk through my story, I'm going to make it interactive. I'm going to ask them questions and hopefully they're going to respond. And what I want to do is to make it a conversation about the story that I'm telling. I think one of the best parts about telling stories in class is the authenticity that your students are going to feel. They're going to see that it's something that you lived and you might have made some mistakes in that situation. It might not have been the best things for you to do all the time. And that's going to make you human and it's going to make your content come to life. One Friday evening, driving home, my wife and my daughter, my daughter at this point was about one to two years old, happened a number of years ago, we saw a little boy on his bike get hit by a car. We were driving down the street. He was driving in the middle of the road. We swerved to avoid him. The car behind us did not. And they hit this little boy. What do you do? Park and jump out and help. Park and jump out. I teach about the bystander effect. That's exactly what I did. I told my wife, pull the car over, call 911, and then I ran out to help him. Yeah. Right? Simple. Now what? Say again? Wait for the ambulance. Wait for the ambulance. Okay. What do I do while I'm waiting? Comfort the kid. Check on him. I have no medical training or first responder skills, but yes, I'm going to go check on him. Right? So I run over. The guy is on, the little boy is on the side of his road. His bike's laid over. He's lying on the ground. Right? He's moving. So I know he's not dead, which is good because the woman who hit him is out of her car yelling, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> She is screaming in the middle of the road, I killed him, he's dead. Oh, God. The situation's a little more complicated now, right? Yeah. So I run over to the little boy, he's not dead. I look down at the little boy, what should I say to him? How you doing? <laughs> what do you say? How you doing? How you doing? What's up, bro? <laughs> That's what I should say, right? I said, don't worry, we've called the cops, help is on the way. Right? Superhero voice, right? I got this. The little boy hears police. The little boy gets scared. The little boy thinks he's in trouble. The little boy gets up, tries to run away, and falls down. The little boy gets up again, starts to run. Now what do I do? The situation becomes a little more complicated. Because to recap, my wife and baby daughter pulled over on the side of the road. Bike in the road, woman yelling he's dead. Boy who's not dead is now fleeing the scene. What do you do? Chase after him. Alright, I've got chase after him and I've got you can't chase after him. I've got a split second to decide, so what did I do? Chase him. I am chasing a boy who just got hit by a car through yards. We're jumping fences. Right? What is my intention in chasing him? I want to make sure he's okay. This dude is a better athlete than I am. Right? We're, we're hopping stuff. Well, you were hurt. I was. I'm, I'm, that was the first day. I was going to add it, but this dude is like, he's amazing. Now, I've never run from the cops. This dude is. He's running from the cops, right? So he's got superhuman strength and speed now, too. I'm chasing him, but I'm not really trying to catch him. <laughs> you just want to make Why? Him. Because you're worried about him. Right? I'm worried about him, but what happens if I catch up to this dude? Like you're a stranger, I don't know you. I'm, a I'm the stranger yeah. danger, yeah. right? He's running from me, and I'm not trying to catch him, because what do I do when I catch him? <laughs> do I tackle him? Like, what do I do, right? It's like, so I'm running just a little bit behind saying, dude, stop, <laughs> wait, come back, and all these kind of things as we're chasing through yards. What do I do? This could go on indefinitely. I could still be chasing this kid. <laughs> Except that after about half a mile, he ran into a house. This is his house, right? Not just a random house, right? He runs into the front door of a house. I'm about, you know, 20 yards behind him. 
I come into the sidewalk in front of his house, and I look in his driveway, and there's a pickup truck with an army decal on the back. Things are a little more complicated. How? You're just intimidated, but I would knock on the door and still tell the parent what happened. Okay. Knock on the door, tell the parent what happened. What is the kid telling the parent? That, you've been chasing. that there is a crazy man chasing me. What does the army decal on the pickup truck in the driveway potentially suggest? There may be a gun in that house. Right? So what happens is I immediately have a new decision to make. So what should I do? Knock on the door. Knock on the door. That's what I decided to do, but I put my hands up. So I walk through the door with my hands up, just in case, because I have no idea what's going on. And it's easy in retrospect to think of different things that I could have done. But I walk through the door with my hands up, and I rang the doorbell, and I step back. Why did I do this? To show that you're not trying to break in their house. Exactly. I want to be as non-threatening as possible. Well, Dad's home. So Dad opens the door and comes charging out. Because Dad's just been told, This guy chasing me. There's a crazy man chasing me. So I just stepped back and said, dude, 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 I'm, your son got hit by a car, right? Only thing I can think to say, at which point his anger turns to concern. And he yells back, oh my God, what happened? So now the kid comes out and the kid's crying because he's afraid he's in trouble now with dad and the cops, Yeah. right? And I said, dude, I just, I just, I just want to make sure he's okay. I'm going to go back to the scene and talk to the police. He says, okay. I camera phone the address so I can give it to the cops. And I turn around and realize, I'm not the only one chasing this dude. There's another dude chasing both of us. Because there was another dude who pulled over, saw the whole thing, who was chasing us. This guy, also in the army, but a combat medic. Oh. What happened is he said, I can actually do something here. <laughs> so we high-fived, and I went back to the scene. He went into the house to check on the kid. I get back to the scene, and it is more chaotic than what I left. The woman who hit him is still screaming and crying. There is now a police officer on the scene. She said that she's like in her first week on the force. And what she has decided to do is draw a chalk outline on the ground to represent where she was told the boy was killed. Oh, God. <laughs> there is also, I'm making this up, this is crazy. There is also a school bus of kids coming back from a field trip who didn't see anything but want to talk to the cops. They want to make a statement. So there's like 25 little kids saying, I saw everything and all of this, trying to make their statement. So I walk up to this very frazzled officer. I said, excuse me, this is the address of the little boy. There's someone there with medical skills who is checking to see if the boy is okay. And she said, thank you. And then I left. <laughs> What's that? Came. She's probably like, I have a baby. I'm here. I know. It's been like half an hour. I'm like, do I stay? Do I go? Right? It was crazy. This started out as a simple situation, right? A simple, unfortunate situation. Kid get hit by a car, and you simply do what? You try to help. And I did. And then the situation did what? It escalated radically. Right? And at every level, I had a new decision to make with different situational factors. Why am I telling you this story? To demonstrate how complex help could be. Because when we think about situations and when people didn't help or didn't help the way that you would, you have to really be in that situation to understand that. Because what seems simple is not simple. There are a lot of consequences, there are a lot of factors that come into our decision-making process that we do not consider until we are in them. And I want us to reflect on that as we continue to talk about helping. Because the simple stuff is a lot more complicated than it seems. And the decisions that you can make while you're sitting at a desk in a very safe classroom, saying this is what you should have done or what I would have done, may or may not be true. And I don't know for me, I've taught about this for a long time, I've taught about the bias term effect, I know you pull over and you help that kid. I'd expect him to run. And what I've learned is don't say police to people who have got hit by cars, right? Especially little kids who might be afraid of them, say it's okay, people are going to come make sure you're good. Tell me where you live, I'll call your mom and dad. Those are things that I should have done instead of don't worry, cops are coming. 
Fun times, right? We look forward to seeing how your interactive stories go in the comments section below. Thank you for tuning in this week on Engage the Sage. Hopefully you're going to be telling interactive stories in your class really soon. Please like, subscribe, so sign up for notifications, and we'll see you next time.